Hey guys, and welcome to today's idiot video. I'm JCAD, I'll be filling in for Team Skeptic. On today's video, we're gonna get a free educational course on misinformation by the one and only Brad Stein. Wanna hear more? Come on in. Atheist Kadabra. So let's begin. Hey, it's God's comic, Brad Stein, and today we discover that atheists believe in magic. If we believed in magic, we as atheists would all collectively try to make you disappear. I don't know if you know it, but there is a, a group of humans in the 21st century that still believe in miracles. Yeah, I do find that amazing. Luckily, their demographic is declining in the U.S. You did mean religious people, right? They'll tell you. A straight face that they are enlightened and don't believe in fairy tales and myths that their religion is based on science and logic and reason oh well maybe he's not referring to religious people because they would never say something like that that their priests teach in the most respected universities on earth they've got doctorates and double doctorates they're the elite of human thought and have single-handedly brought humanity out of the Dark Ages and into the light. Then want to usher in a brand new world where intelligence is measured by how deeply you are committed to the religion of materialism and the salvation of science. Okay, these priests have quite literally brought us out of the Dark Ages. Brad, you are 61 years old. Thanks to science, you get to sit there and preach against it. Your life expectancy has more than doubled thanks to those priests. And in your lifetime, we will have sent people to not only the moon, but to Mars. All of which cannot be accredited to any religion. They have a sacred text that they revere as holy and inerrant. And it has brought the ultimate revelation to the earth as to man's meaning, purpose, morality, and destiny. And, as all great beliefs, it too has a Genesis story about the origins of man. But remember, this is based on logic and reason and not some archaic invisible man in the sky. We didn't just use logic itself to come to the conclusion that all living things share a common ancestor. We use demonstrable evidence derived from the scientific method, the same method that we use to demonstrate gravity exists. You can repeatedly test the theory of gravity the same way you can repeatedly test and observe evolution, or the Big Bang Theory. They believe only in that which they can touch and taste and hear and smell and see. No. We don't just believe that. You got us confused with the flat earthers. We actually like to use instruments to test things that we can't see, hear, or feel. I know oxygen exists even though I can't see it. I know that my body is made up of cells, which I can't see individually. Do you have a carbon monoxide detector in your house? You think that would exist if we just relied on our senses? It's got to be measurable, and quantifiable, and testable, observable, and repeatable. And their Genesis story goes like this. In the beginning, there was nothing, and it blew up. Wrong again, Brad. We don't know what was before the Big Bang, and we're all well aware that the Big Bang has an unfortunate name, because it doesn't actually represent what the theory tells us, which it was more of a sudden rapid expansion, like a, like a balloon expanding, not like a literal bang from a bomb going off. It's helpful to actually go and look into these things before you publicly embarrass yourself like you currently are. Did, did you hear what I just said? It is to my dismay to report that we all unfortunately just heard what you said. The smartest of the smart, the most prestigious universities in scientific analysis has reached the conclusion that at one time in history, nothing exploded and created everything. Brad, the only people who think that are you and your fellow creationists who never attempt to learn what the Big Bang actually is. Again, the smartest of the smart don't agree with you at all. Stop saying they do. Not only did the explosion form all of matter as we know it, but it spread out across the galaxy. 
Uh, if you're going to be the one who's schooling us on science, try not to confuse the universe with a galaxy. Mainly of hydrogen and helium. Some time later, though, there was cooling into orbs that became planets, but still filled with inorganic matter. This doesn't even make sense. There's so much that happened between when the universe started to cool down and when planets formed. For me to go into detail here would make this video an hour long, but essentially thanks to gravity, hydrogen and helium could start clumping together, forming denser regions in one area and emptier regions in others. Over time, these clumps grew bigger and bigger, essentially turning into stars. Inside the stars, you have nuclear fusion happening, so all the heavier elements are being made, and when the stars die, they explode. They eject all of that material out into space. All those heavier elements start to do what the hydrogen and helium did, clump together those clumps will go on to become planets. Very rough explanation, but what I always say is, Google is your friend. Nothing was organic or alive as we know it, and yet somehow, inexplicably, this non-living dead matter was resurrected to become living organisms. You might want to actually check what a resurrection is. Your Bible's got a good example of one, which is something I would assume you believe in. Abiogenesis mentions resurrection zero times and has a much more solid foundation backing it up. We know organic material can form in certain conditions replicated by the early earth. That's not up for debate. Your Bible says a fairy man did it using dirt. Rising from the dead and over eons of time magically becoming more advanced and sophisticated. Not by design, mind you, but just the byproduct of billions of years of chance mutations or mistakes. You're acting like evolution hasn't been demonstrably proven over and over and over again. We know from anatomy, genetics, biogeography, fossil records, and observations that evolution by natural selection is a fact. But let me guess, the fairy man in the sky is easier for you. That sometimes either had no deleterious effect, so it remained, or accidentally caused the organism to be able to survive better, and thus pass this on to its progeny. Because none of this was designed, even the eventual evolution of the brain was an accident. There was no inductive reasoning or planning involved. And why does there need to be? The universe doesn't owe you any explanations. You are not special. Instincts that allowed the species to survive, even though it had no self-awareness, it was surviving, or that it was soon to be stopping in surviving, in death. Didn't know any of this. Didn't dread death because it couldn't conceptualize it. Well, okay, it's not like evolution is saying a complex functioning brain just popped out of nowhere. Evolution says that over billions of years, an unfathomable amount of time, complex organisms can evolve from simple ones. And it's not a matter of if. These are demonstrably proven facts, just like gravity. Now, I'm summarizing, of course, and I don't pretend to be a expert on neo-Darwinistic theory. What I have described is pretty much what the materialist believes. Seeing as how I've just debunked everything that spewed out of your mouth, Brad, I would beg to differ. Everything that has gotten us this far to be able to analyze our existence was an accident. It didn't have to happen, just did. But because nothing was designed, then everything is trapped in the matrix, so to speak. No one designed us, nothing was planned, but instead simply plods on without hesitation and without an end game. Again, who cares? I certainly have no problem knowing that there is absolutely no reason for my existence. And I personally find tremendous beauty in the fact that I am here. Naturally. Evidence aside, I don't need a designer. I'm content in my own ignorance of the missing pieces to the puzzle. As a matter of fact, it is all going to cool down someday and die. Completely. So, everything we observe about who we are and where we're going is simply programmed into our brain that even has to give us the illusion we are thinking it for ourselves. You aren't owed anything. And just because you don't understand the very things that you are misrepresenting does not mean it's wrong. But if we got here by time and energy and chance without purpose, then we don't have any ultimate purpose to strive for. 
Exactly. We might not have an ultimate purpose or a divine purpose, but we as a species and a society can come up with an ultimate purpose that's best for us and for everyone around us. And we can strive for that. And individually, purpose is something you can give yourself. It doesn't need to be intrinsic. I have purpose without your God telling me what my purpose is. But they will tell you they don't believe that. They do agree life has no ultimate purpose, but that's why we choose to give our own purpose to life with our choices. Remember, there is no ultimate meaning, and yet they say by choosing to sort of apply meaning to choices and behavior that somehow magically it takes on significance. No, not magically. Magic is more like me telling you I had a conversation with a talking snake. This is, of course, the atheist version of faith. No, because as I stated a second ago, there's no intrinsic purpose to the world that we live in, and you can't demonstrate that there is. Believing and hoping for something they cannot prove in order to make their lives livable. And you just described a Christian. So what have we found? That you are scientifically illiterate in all ways shapes, and forms. And you have no shame to admit that publicly. Atheists have a Genesis story. No, nothing blew up once, made everything. Atheists believe that inorganic, non-living material can resurrect from the dead, become alive, to begin to evolve, and through struggle and difficulty become more advanced with the hope that someday we'll live forever. What atheist thinks we're going to live forever? They believe in morals coming from nature and instilling it in us, the need to be nice to each other, help each other, even to our detriment, in order to save the world and become enlightened beings whose good works will last eternally. And why shouldn't we? Secular humanism achieves this. The sheer fact that Christians cherry-pick the good stuff out of their Bible and leave the bad stuff is a pretty good indicator that their morals aren't based from the Bible. They even believe there are other life forms out there that are always more advanced than us, always more moral, more altruistic. And they'll come here someday to teach us how to become saved from ourselves through their superior knowledge, wisdom, and gifts to us, where someday mankind will lie down with the lion and the lamb and all will be redeemed. All right, I'm completely convinced he's not talking about atheists anymore. It never really was. I certainly think that there's life elsewhere. I don't know for sure, and I won't know until there's evidence provided for it. Things like the Drake equation definitely lean towards there being life elsewhere. In other words, atheists have to mimic and counterfeit the reality that is God's revelation to man and his salvation through his son in order to make their belief system coherent, livable, purposeful, and meaningful. Nothing in this video represents atheism at all. Whatever 10 minutes of research you did on evolution in the Big Bang was a waste of your time. This was a monumental failure at trying to misrepresent something you failed to even grasp at an elementary level. You can't even get atheism right. Atheism is simply the religion of the proud who refuse to acknowledge their creator, but manage to craft their own idols out of fantasy and wishful thinking, all the while attacking and demeaning Christians who, though not perfect, do have the one thing they long for, the actual answer to the question they have no way to answer. Proud? Yeah, you know, I am proud to be an atheist because I care about the truth. And my idols are people who also care about the truth, who don't simply put an irrational fairy tale above everyone else while sitting there playing the victim of prosecution by atheists. Christianity is well documented for their persecutions. On top of that, you make up 70% of the United States, but you're the ones who are persecuted. Brad Stein, the only thing that Christianity can answer for us is how to stop being curious. Why are we here? Because your creator said so. No, a book written by men said so. That's why. Maybe it's time you abandon your fairy tale of atheism and join us. The water's fine. 
Come on in. We've been waiting for you a long time. Nothing about the way you said any of that makes you want to go anywhere near you or your crazy beliefs. This is God's comic, Brad Stein. And as usual, the truth is what I'm delivering. And PC free is liberty. Unfortunately, nothing that came out of this man's mouth was true. Misinformation and misrepresentation is important to people like Brad Stein. That's how they can keep making money off of their audience. They know that their audience isn't going to go look this stuff up. Brad Stein, you're a fucking idiot. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. Science is going to continue to encroach on the territory of creationism because unlike creationists, science cares about what's true. Also, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, feel free to head over to my channel and subscribe for more videos like it. I'm Jcat and I'm out.